Hey, what's up, Dean? It's your performance. At the shop. Jim Sir Chevelle. Sh -sh 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 Chevelle. So I had all the issues yesterday. Fuel pump. Dash being weird. Car runs, doesn't shut off with the key off. So came in this morning. I had fixed the fuel pump yesterday. Got all that sorted out. Came in this morning to start going through to figure out what went wrong or if it was something I did wrong, um, which oddly enough, it was not something I did wrong. Um, basically, uh, I started with putting the battery back on. <clears throat> as soon as I hooked that up, nothing was on in the car. Key was off. So... I thought that was kind of weird that if you run it, it stays running, but if you disconnect the battery, get it to shut off, um, which I pulled the fuel pump fuse out of the holly, get it to shut off, disconnect the battery, reconnect the battery, nothing comes back on. So it was, it was really weird to me that, you know, it didn't click in my head neither, that it was something whatever anyways so I started looking and I decided I would start the car so I did that and one by one I pulled all the fuses and the only one that would shut the car off was battery one which is what I have the 12 volt feed for the holly so I thought man that's weird so I put the fuse back in um, kept, kept the key off and I back probed all the ignition switch stuff and so this is the ignition switch that's on the column and it has a rod that goes in that slot and that's what pulls it and as you turn the key it triggers different terminals so like this is your battery terminal I think this is a battery terminal then this is ignition I can't remember exactly how they're pinned um, but I got on a brown wire it would start kind of twitching wherever the key was close so I thought oh man the switch is bad so I had the auto parts store bring over a new switch I put it in I did ohm meter not ohm meter continuity on each terminal to set the position you see how they're slotted so I set the position and locked it down started the car turned it off and it did the same thing So that made me wonder, well, what's going on? Um, so I ended up called Dakota Digital. Uh, they said it was something with the Holly system. So I basically hung up with them and thought about, okay, what's going on? The gauges stay on, that's weird. Um, even with the key off, the LCDs were on but they were acting kind of weird, like it would go to a voltage signal, then you turn the key on, it would go to the odometer signal, or reading, whatever. So it was doing something, but doing something at the same time. Um, so I basically took the Dakota Digital VHX box and disconnected the 12 volt wire, the gauges still worked. So then I thought, yeah, this is above and beyond my paycheck. So I called Dakota Digital back, and I got a different guy, Adam, I believe, a uh, real nice guy, and he said, okay, that's, it shouldn't have, you shouldn't be able to do anything with that 12 volt signal removed. So something's feeding voltage, a low voltage into the box. So I said, okay, what the hell's going on? So we disconnected the speed signal, that didn't do anything, we disconnected the Fuel gauge, that didn't have anything. Of course, the last one we disconnect. The tack wire from the holly, we disconnected that and it had 12.7 volts. So I thought, well, that's weird, you know, and the guy said, oh, it shouldn't have voltage on it. So we put everything back and everything worked fine. Uh, the car would start, shut off, do everything fine. And I said, oh shit, look at that. You know, something's going on with the holly that it's feeding 12 volt out the tack signal. 
little did I know, I call Holly and I got, I don't remember his name, another super nice guy. And um, I said, yeah, you know, we're getting 12 volts out. He said, well, you should. It's a 12 volt square wave. I don't know what that exactly means. I know it's like squares. So I don't know if it pulses or whatever. Um, so he said, let me ask you a question. If you hook the tack wire up, does the tack work? And I said, yeah, the tack works fine. You, you know, revs up, does whatever. He said, okay, so it's not the holly because if the holly was feeding like a direct 12 volt, the tack wouldn't work. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. He said, so I'm not, I'm not blaming the product. He said, but something in the Dakota digital box is crossing a portion of the 12 volt signal over. So he said, you know, the best thing to do is use their BIM module. Uh, they have a Dakota Digital actually puts a lot of research into or development, I guess you could say, into their gauge packages. So not only do they have this style gauge, but they also, well, they have a, a bunch of different style gauges for freaking everything. But they have um, add-on boxes where you could add inputs, outputs, do all kinds of stuff. But you could also buy these modules that will literally plug into your OBD2 port. So if you're running like a factory ECM, you plug it into your OBD port and it'll pick up all the signals that a factory ECM could put out like um, over the CAN bus. So it'd be like, it'd be every signal, tack, speedo, even fuel gauge, like it'll read them all. They also have it for the Holly. They have it for, I believe, Mega Squirt not sure I, I don't know all of them um and i have seen them a bunch of times i just for this i you know i get what i get and then i rework everything to be the right way so he said yeah i, I would use the bim module that way you eliminate all the wires coming in and if you remember this car has a separate water temp sender oil pressure sender then you have to feed the speed the tack so you have a you know a pretty good amount of extra wires the oil temp is three the water temp is two the speed is one and the tack is one so three five seven wires total extra that you feed into the car um so i was like oh man I, you know i didn't even think of that so i looked it up it's cheap it's like 120 bucks something like that off summit so i called jim i said hey you know found what the issue is it's something inside that box is acting weird but if i disconnect the wire everything's perfect um so we need to order this box that's the best way to do it order the box i unfortunately am going away um so the box wouldn't get here in time but i want jim to have his car back so it's a very easy box to plug in to the holly system uh it plugs right into their can port that two well it's four wire but it's technically only two Plugs into this can port right here. That orange wires. Plugs into that port right there. And that, um, well, technically it's two wires. And then you have ignition and ground, but whatever. I don't think you need the ignition and ground, to be honest with you, except for the handheld. Um, so it plugs into there, and then it has a separate wire that plugs into the module for the actual dash so he's gonna get all that ordered i already took everything back out so the tack wire i have it all loomed in but i disconnected it from the deutsch connector going in the firewall i eliminated it from underneath the dashboard i pulled the speed wire out uh oil pressure water temp Pulled them all back out um, and I put, which I had to get a different one because, so here's his water temp right here. So that's out and you could see it was like getting all gooed up with something. This is his oil pressure um, that had this bracket. So I took the bracket off the transmission. I don't know what the need for that bracket was. There wasn't one. Um, Oh, the other parts in the box, but the part that goes on the side of an LS oil pan, it's like a cap. Let me show you. 
there. That's like the factory one. So what everybody does, and it's perfectly fine, is you drill and tap an eighth inch MPT. So that is an eighth inch MPT plug that I started to put in, but then you notice it's coming all the way through. So it's never gonna stop or bottom itself out in there. And that's not good. So I grabbed one off another oil pan, put it on, all that's eliminated. Now, now, car does what it's supposed to do. Um, trying to get the Caprice out of the way, he dropped it off right in the way of everything, but that's all right, we'll get it moved. So dash is off, everything's off, I'll shut the light off. Everything comes on. Now mind you, it has an error because there's no sending units. Um, so nothing's been set up on here. Car starts right up. The voltage gauge still works because that reads off of the ignition wire. So, and now, the dash lights work, which it's kind of cool that it kind of inverts the colors. When you shut it off, the, the numbering is black and the, I don't know if you want to call it a surround, is gray. You turn it on and the numbering turns white. So that's pretty neat. And I think you could change them to whatever color you want, but... <laughs> Now it runs right, everything works right, and let's see, how do we, we're here? Uh, yeah, I'll just hold it here. Everything shuts off. Perfect. Everything works. AC works, neutral safety works, backup lights work, blinkers work, hazards work. I think the other day, I didn't have the fuse in for the hazards, but the hazards all work. Everything is good. Um, like I said, I'm trying to get them to come back. Today is Monday. I leave day after tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to pull the Caprice out of the way, move the Monte Carlo, and take Jim Chevelle for a ride. So get your fat hand out of the way. Once I take the car for a ride, I'll try and record try and record i hate recording while i'm driving somebody else's car but um yeah so i'll be right back all right this is it a couple issues sorted through them key on fuel's wrong and i'm probably almost out of fuel to be honest with you sits here and idles nice i don't have the laptop hooked up because it's dead because I got it out and tuned all the fuel and the timing and the transmission. Transmission acts a little weird, like shifts a little early, but we got all that sorted out now. So, Second gear bangs a little hard. I think that's in the uh, shift kit. No, that wasn't too bad. But, don't mind the gauge reading error. It pretty much just hazes the tires with ease. Um, and it's on I would say a pretty conservative tune so definitely runs awesome Jim says is a stock six liter with a big cam. Um, really does perform much better than a stock six liter with a big cam. This car comes to life really quick. And it's got a 373 in the rear. Um, that's a big pothole. We're not gonna do potholes. 
Uh, there's an accident up the road. We're not going to go up there. But we will let the police officer know that we are pulling out. So. With ease. I'll tell you what. This is a uh, really, really nice car. Drives good. Um, steering's a little soft. It's an old car, you know. But drives really good. Um, nice and straight. Handles good. And just works. The car works, which is always really, really nice. Go up 27 here a little bit. Before we run out of fuel, I'm gonna put a car away. But the car is healthy, super responsive, which is good. That's what we do. We tune them really good, y'all. So I took my time on this one and made sure everything was good. For Jim Chevelle, that's it. We're sending it home. Appreciate you watching. Like, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified. Leave me a comment.